Philippians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. Philippians chapter 4, in verses 7 through 9. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. We've been going through the series titled Deposit These Things, and we're talking about how that you, when you get saved, it's like opening up an account at a bank, a checking account, and uh, you could open an account for free, and that salvation is free, but then once you open that account, you've got to make deposits in order to make withdrawals. You can't take money out of your account unless you put money into your account. You need to deposit these things. At the end of verse number eight, it says that think on these things. That phrase is the idea of to deposit these things. It's an accounting term in the Greek language. And so we've been going through a look at what it means to deposit things that are true and honest and just and pure <coughs> and lovely. And today we're going to talk about what sort of things are of good report. What sort of things are good report? You know, the idea of good report is good news. And we live in a world today where there's just not a lot of good news. You know, we live in a world of, <coughs> excuse me, bad news. Uh, you look at the paper and look on the news, you see about inflation you see about debts, you see about wars, you see about shootings, you see about COVID. Um, but I've got good news for you. And the good news is you don't have to panic. And, and the reason why is because the Bible says in Matthew 24, verse number six, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that, <coughs> see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And we're going to see bad news in the world today, but we've got the good news. The Bible says, he which testify of these things saith, surely I come quickly, amen, even so come Lord Jesus. In Revelation twenty two twenty, we've got the good news of the gospel. You know, the Bible, the word gospel means good news. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation and to, to all the... To, excuse me, is the power of God unto salvation, everyone that believe it to the Jew first and also the Greek. The gospel is the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The headline is that Jesus saves. Turn over your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and look at verses number one through four. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses one through four. The good news of the gospel is, moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved, you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, the good news, the headline news is that Jesus saves. The gospel is the good news, and you can read all about it. In John chapter 20, in verse number 31, it says, But these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. In 1 John chapter 5, in verses 12 and 13, it says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. God has written this down and we can read it, read the good news of the gospel. We can read about what it means to be saved and to know that we're going to heaven. We can read the whole story. Go over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and look at verses number 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 2 and beginning with verse number 1. It says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. <coughs> For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of the reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? You see, God has given us the whole story, the story of the good news of the gospel. Now, there is bad news. 
The bad news is Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The bad news is because of our sins, we're condemned already. In John chapter 3 and verse number 18, it says, he that believeth not on him, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In verse 36, it says, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about this. Verse number 36, he says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abideth in him. You see, the bad news is that all have sinned. The bad news is that we already, without Christ, are condemned to hell for all eternity. But the good news is that God has sent his Son to die for us. See, even your best is not good enough. In Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number six, it says, but we are all as an unclean thing and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags and we do all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And even the best that you have to offer, the best of your religion, the best of your righteousness, the best of your rituals are not good enough to get you into heaven. And that's the bad news. But the good news is that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. In Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, it says, But God commendeth or showed his love towards us, and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died to save us from our sins, He died to give us the gift of salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, the same man should boast. We can't work for our salvation, but God has given us the gift of salvation that we can receive into our hearts and to our lives. You see, the good news ought to draw you to God. In Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4, the Bible says, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? You see, the good news of the gospel ought to draw you to God. The good news of the gospel ought to draw you to Jesus Christ. You can know for sure that you're going to heaven. You can know that your sins are forgiven. You can know that you have eternal life. And that's the good news of the gospel. <coughs> and you need to receive that news today. But you see, you and I as Christians, we ought to be God's delivery boy. We, you know, when my boys were younger, they used to deliver newspapers to houses in our area. And, and you and I need to deliver the good news of the gospel. In Isaiah chapter 52 and verse number seven, is this how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. The Bible says you and I are the ones that need to take our feet and go out and publish the good news of the gospel to go out and tell others about Jesus Christ because if we don't, who will? Go over to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and look at verses 13 through 17. Romans chapter 10 verses 13 through 17. Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you're here today and you've never called upon God, if you've never called upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, the good news is you can do that today. But verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, when it talks about a preacher there, it's not talking about me. It's talking about every one of us. The preacher is the one that bears the good news, that tells others about Christ. Verse number 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God has called you and God has called me to go out and to give the gospel to others. He's called us to give the gospel and share it with others as well. They're bringing me some tea here to help out with it. Thank you. And so we need to share that gospel by giving out Bible tracts, by inviting people to church, by sharing our testimony, by telling them about the good news of the gospel. Because if we don't do it, who's going to do it? We need to shout it from the mountaintops. In Isaiah chapter 42 and verses 11 and 12, it says, Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rocks sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare 
declare his praise in the islands. And God has put you and God has put me into the islands here in Hawaii so that we can tell others about the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that we can tell others about the good news of God. And you and I need to be doing that. Every week you should be inviting people to church. Every week you should be giving out gospel tracts. We need to shout it from the mountaintops. We need to declare it in the islands, the praise of God, because we're called to give that good news to others. But also, let me ask you a question. What good news do you have to share today? In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You see, as, as Christians, as believers, we ought to have good news to share every day, not just the good news of the gospel, but we ought to be able to share the good news of what God is doing in our lives, to talk about things like our devotions, our, our Bible study, our memory verses. When's the last time you went up to somebody and said, let me tell you what I read in my Bible this week. Let me tell you what verse I'm memorizing in the scriptures this week. Let me, let me tell you what, I, what I'm learning in my Bible study this week. You know, we ought to be able to share the good news. That's the positive. The, the good report, the good news of the things that God is doing in our lives. We ought to talk about the lessons and the messages we hear. I hope that when you come to church on Sunday and hear the message of the Word of God, I hope that you go out during the week and maybe share that with others. You know, share them. Let me tell you what I learned in church. Let me tell you what I learned from the Bible. Uh, we ought to be sharing that good news with others as well. Talk about the blessings of God and how he's working in your life. You know, we ought to talk about God. We ought to talk about, this is what God's doing for me this morning. Have you told anybody this morning, let me tell you about what God did for me this week. Let me tell you about how God answered a prayer in my life this week. Let me tell you about how God's working in my life. We ought to be sharing good news. That's depositing good reports into our lives. And, and those are the things that we can draw upon. We ought to talk about even the challenges and the struggles of our life. In James chapter 5, verse number 16, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye, ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I think that it's even sharing sometimes the challenges and the struggles that we're going through, that that can be depositing a good report because we're, we're sharing it with somebody so they can pray for us. I need you to pray for me. Or we're sharing it with somebody so that they can, they can hold us accountable and encourage us in our walk with the Lord. And, and we ought to, every time we get together with other Christians, we ought to have a good report. We ought not just to talk about the weather. We ought not just to talk about what's going on at work. We ought not just to talk about uh, what's happening in, in our families, but we ought to talk about the goodness of God, and we ought to have a good report to share with one another. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says, How is it then, brethren, when you uh, come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Now, what was happening in the Corinthian church, uh, there was a little bit of a competition going on, and everybody was trying to talk at one time, and everybody was trying to share something at one time, and Paul said, wait a minute, you gotta slow down here. You gotta give other people a chance to talk as well. You can't always be in the limelight. You can't always be the center of attention. But he said, listen, but the thing I want you to point out, point out to you here is he said, listen, every one of those in the Corinthian church was, was not one of the most spiritual churches of that day. But every one of them, they had, uh, they had a psalm, uh, they had scripture to share, they had a doctrine, they had something, a revelation, something that they'd learned. And you and I, every time we get together with another Christian, whether it's here at church or whether it's at, at work or in our homes or wherever it's at, we ought to take time to share a good report, to share a good report of the blessings of God and the goodness of God in our lives. And this is what God is doing for me, and this is what God is teaching me, and this is what God is doing in my life. But we also ought to share good report about others. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29, 29 turn over there if you would with, with me please. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Uh, the, the root word of this idea of good report in, in, in the passages in Philippians that we've been reading, the root word when you go back to it is it means literally good rumors. 
good rumors. You know, uh, James chapter four, verse 11, it says, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaking evil of his brother and judges his brother, speak evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. You see, it's, it's, we're sometimes quick to share gossip. We're sometimes quick to share, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you hear what they did? Did you hear what happened to them? And, and we're quick to share <coughs> bad news, but we need to be quick to share good news. We need to be quick to share things that will edify and, and build up in the lives of others. And we need to share those kind of things. So in First Peter chapter 4 and verse number 8, it says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Have you ever gotten a check like this one here? They're going to put it on the screen now for me. Have you ever seen a check like that, non-sufficient funds? Every once in a while, one will come to the church where somebody uh, wrote their tie check and somehow miscalculated their, how much money was in the bank, and that check will come back. And if you've ever gotten one of those in your own checking account, you know, it's very frustrating. And, and what's really frustrating about this is not only uh, do they have that non-sufficient funds, not only is that the problem, but then they, they penalize you for it, don't they? Uh, because you didn't have enough money, they take more money out of your account. And that's really a, a great thing to do. And, and some businesses, many businesses, what they do, if, you get a, if they get a check like this, they'll put it back through a second time. And, and, and then you get charged a second time if you don't have the money in there. Now, we, when we get the check back, what we do is we just contact the person and say, this is what happened, and you can do what you want with it and take care of it however you would like to. Uh, we don't want to keep charging you over and over again for the same thing. You know, and, and, and the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4, 8, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. The word cover means to hide that which is stolen. It, it, it means that you're not, even though it was wrong, uh, you're not going to publish it. You ever gone into a business and they've got those checks like that on their wall or on a bulletin board uh, posted up there because people put those checks through and, and, uh, and taking the money away? And I understand why they do that, but you and I as Christians, we ought, we ought to cover sin, not publish it, not put it out there for everybody, not, not make rumors about other people. You see, Proverbs 10, 12, it says, hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. And we need to be careful that we don't post it, that we don't put it out there. When something happens, we need to deal with it privately and lovingly and kindly and not in a rumor way and not in a gossipy way. And 1 Corinthians 13, 5, it says, love does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil thinketh no evil. The phrase thinketh no evil is, means does not hold evil on account. What happens a lot of times is when we're hurt by somebody, what we do is we take that on our account and, and we hold it inside of us. And maybe we don't even say anything about it, but we keep it inside there. And then they do something else and we hold that inside of us. And after a while, uh, they get too much debt. You ever gone into the store where that little machine is with your credit card and you ever put it through the credit card machine and the machine rejects your card? It's not rejecting your card, it's rejecting your debt. It's rejecting all the things that have added up inside of there. And so often, that's what we do with each other. We hold on to these hurts. We hold on to these, uh, these, these things that have happened. And, and, and then we talk about it and, and publish it. And, and we make a big deal out of it and just keep building up and building up. And we ought to cover the sin. In Proverbs 17 and verse 9, it says, He that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. When you talk about it, that's what's going to cause division. But when there's a problem, you cover it up. It doesn't mean you don't deal with an issue. <coughs> it doesn't mean you don't deal with a problem. It was, if you've got a problem with something, the Bible says go to them one-on-one -on -one and, and deal with it in the correct biblical way. But don't, don't go out there and publish it and make a big rumor about it, make gossip about it. Have a good report about one another. Even when they've hurt you, you've got to find something good to say about that person. See, that's depositing good reports when you take time to say good things about people and not bad things about others. We need to share a, a good word. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25, it says, heaviness in the heart of man maketh a stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. You know what people need when they come to church? They need a good word. 
They need for you to come up to them and say, hey, listen, brother, how you doing today? And, and maybe just to tell them how much you appreciate them and how much you love them and how thankful you are for, them, for their friendship. And, and, and just take time to share a good word. You know, people are hurting in life today. And what we need is we need more Christians to be ready to share a good word, a word of encouragement, a word of blessing to others around them. This morning, as you've come to church, what's the good word you shared with somebody else? What is it in some way that you've been a blessing to somebody else? Somebody needs that heaviness lifted, and you can be the one to do it with a smile and a cheerful attitude in the right and saying the right thing. See, the right word at the right time can do wonders. In Proverbs 12, 25, it says, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. In Proverbs 16, 24, it says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. And we ought to take time Every time we get together, and not just at church, you ought to do this at home with your family. You ought to do this at work with your coworkers. You ought to take time when you're in the store with the clerk of the score. It's just take a moment to give a good word. Just take a moment to give a word of encouragement. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for the smile on your face. Thank you for just being a, a consistent and, and always there. Thank you for the little things you do. We need to be depositing good reports. And every time we say something positive about something, it not only goes to their account, but it goes to our account as well. And, and, and we especially need to have good reports about the Lord. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Do you realize that God has a book in heaven that every time you talk about him and every time you think about him, uh, he writes it down in that book that's to be deposited to your account every time you do that. And so when we talk about the Lord, that's a good report that we're depositing. That's something that we're, we're putting forth and, and we need to put forth those things in, in, in our lives as Christians to deposit a good report. It's not about... <clears throat> the past and what we did. It's about what we're going to do. In John chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, it says, when Jesus had lifted himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, Lord, instead of condemning her, encouraged her. And, and, and encourage her to do the right thing. And that's what you and I as Christians ought to do, is not hold their past against them, but to encourage them in their future. Encourage them with a good word that you can do what's right in God. And encourage them to go on and to do the right thing. But what about a good report about you? In 3 John chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, Demetrius hath good report of all men. And of truth itself, yea, and we also bear record, and you know that our record is true. See, this young, this young man, Demetrius, had a good report. And I wonder, do you have a good report of all men? Of the people here in church, would they give a good report of you? Uh, of the people that you work with, would they give a good report of you? Uh, of your family, would they give a good report of you of how you act at home? See, what would your report, what would your credit score be as a Christian? You know, we, uh, we all want to look at our credit score and see how it is. What would your credit score be as a Christian? In Acts chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, it says, Then came he to Derba and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, and believed, but her, his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were Lystra and Iconium. Here was a young man that was a certain young man, had a certain mother. I mean, everybody knew this young man. Everybody Everybody knew his mom, and they had a good report. They were well reported of. And, and is that the kind of testimony that you have? What is your spiritual credit report? What, what do people think about you? If I were to go to a coworker and say, is, is that person a Christian? Would they, would they know it by looking at your life? Would they know it by the way you act and by the way you talk and by the way you live at work? If you were to go home and talk to your children, what would their report be? And by the way, uh, they sometimes get those reports in children's church and Sunday school class. And what would your report be? You know, what is your report? 
report in, with, the, with the Christians? What's your report with the unsaved? In 1 Peter 2.12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. They may not like the fact that you're a Christian, but they cannot condemn your testimony. We need to have the right kind of testimony for the unsaved. Uh, we need to have a good report with the Lord. In Romans chapter 14, verse number 10, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. In verse 12, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every one of us is gonna give a report to God for how we've lived this life. And what is on God's report? What's written in God's book about your life right now? In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to the hath done, whether it be good or bad. And so we need to have that, that good report. And, and that good report starts with the good news of the gospel. And, and if you're here and you're not saved, then you need to start with salvation because the bad news is you're condemned already without Jesus Christ as your savior. But the good news is that he died, he was buried, and he rose again. And you and I need to make sure of our salvation. <clears throat> but if we're Christians, we need to give a good report. Make it your, make a decision that every week I'm going to invite somebody to church. Every week I'm going to give out this many gospel tracts. Every week I'm going to share my testimony with someone about how the Lord changed my life. I'm going to share the gospel with somebody. Because if you don't do that, who's going to do that? And every time you share the gospel, it's like making a deposit to your spiritual account. And you and I need to be giving that good news and sharing it with others around us as well. And then we need to give a good report about others. Take time really to praise people, your, your spouse, your children, your parents. Let them know you appreciate them. Your, your young people, your parents want to hear from you. They hear all the bad things that you don't like about them, but they need to hear, hey, thank you for being my mom. Thank you for being my dad. Thank you for making my meals. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for taking me to church or whatever else it is. And, and parents, your children, we tell them everything they're doing wrong, but we need to tell them what they're doing right. We need to tell that to one another as well. We need to share the good report. And so every time you come to church, make it your goal to find at least five people that I'm going to give a good report to, that I'm going to find at least five people that I'm going to take time just to tell them how much I appreciate them and how they're a blessing to me and, and, and to encourage them in the Lord, to share just a good word with them and, and helping them in their walk with the Lord and, and taking that next step with them as well. And then to have that at work as well, to be an encouragement to the workers, people you work with, and the people around you. And then what is your report with the Lord? What is your testimony with God? Take a moment to honestly think about it. If I were to get a report card from my coworkers right now, if they were to give me a credit rating as a Christian, what would it be? If the people in the church were to give a report on me as a Christian, what would it be? What about God? That's the most important one. What would that report be? I, I want to end, I've just got two verses, a couple of verses we're going to look at, but I want to end by asking you a question, a very personal question. Are you fat? Are you fat? Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 30, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart and a good report maketh the bones fat. You see, a good report maketh the bones fat. And we need to give a good report before the Lord to deposit good things, to deposit a good report. Go to Psalms chapter 36. This is the last place we'll turn to, and I'll quote one other verse, and we'll close. Psalms chapter 36. And look at verses 1 through 10. Psalms chapter 36, and begin with verse number 1. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and do good. He devises mischief on, upon his bed, and he setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. 
Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are as great deep, O Lord. Thou perceivest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of the house, and thou shalt make them drink of the rivers of thy pleasures. For with thee in the fountain of life, and the light shall be, we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. The wicked person is the person who's constantly complaining, has nothing good to report. But the righteous person is the one that is looking at the goodness of God and the blessings of God in their life. Psalms 118 verse 24 says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Don't be an Eeyore. Don't be the Christians walking around with a cloud over their head every day and nothing's right, nothing's good. Don't be the complainer. Make it your habit every day to deposit things that are of good report. Make it your habit every day to give praise to God and praise to others and talk about the goodness of God. Yes, bad things happen and difficult times come, but we can still praise the Lord and the goodness of God.